everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I am going to dye this gray twist yarn that I received in one of my knit crate boxes. Um, this marled sock yarn is 40% merino, 40% Peruvian highland wool, and 20% nylon. And I believe that this is one of the yarn bases that is available through uh, Knit Crate's Bear Yarn Service Dyer Supplier. Um, and I have been eyeing that yarn for a long time. So when this showed up in one of my subscription boxes, I was really, really excited. And I knew that I wanted to go and try to dye it myself. I am not 100% sure that this is identical to the Bear Yarn Base. However, this does say that these yarns are naturally colored and each skein is unique. So therefore, I do think that these are the natural wool colors um, and that this would be equivalent to what the Bear Yarn Base would be from Dyer Supplier. Now, if you're interested in Knit Crate, um, you can find an affiliate link and a coupon code in the video description. And I'll also include a link to this bear yarn from Dyer Supplier. I truly wavered on the technique that I wanted to explore here. Um, but in the end, I decided to go back to my safety zone and try breaking Wilton's Violet on this yarn. Um, I think that it'll, since this is a technique I do a lot and I have a really good handle on it, it'll help me get a good handle on this yarn, which I actually expect to absorb the dye slower than, say, Stroll, which is Superwash Merino and Nylon. In this pot, I have eight cups of water, and I'm about to add one tablespoon of white vinegar. This is the proportion that I use for breaking Wilton's Violet. And if I was just doing this on stroll, I wouldn't even necessarily need to add a second teaspoon. I don't know if I'm going to need to do that today. I haven't tried dyeing this yarn before, but that is part of the fun. I am currently mixing a half teaspoon of the Wilton's Violet food coloring into half a cup of water. Um, this is my standard setup for this project, and since our dye bath is ready to go, I'm going to get the yarn ready, and then we'll add the dye immediately before we start dip dyeing. I pre-soaked the yarn in plain tap water, and I just gently squeezed out um, most of the excess water. Now adding the dye, there's a tiny bit left in the cup. Now I'm immediately starting the dip dye. And I always like to do this a little slowly. And we basically wait for the water to start to look blue. Um, but if you go too quickly, you'll end up with some purples all over. And I can tell you right now that this is definitely going slower than Stroll. So you see that runoff looks blue, but what's in the pot still looks like there's some pink to me. Although if I add the yarn, I guess I'm seeing that, that blue. So I'm going to go ahead now and add that last bit. You can see that brighter blue that is left behind. Um, and that's what we are you looking for when we're breaking this Wilton's Violet food coloring. So if I show you what's left, what's left are these blue number ones. Um, I'm going to reduce the heat since I don't want it to simmer too much. And I'm going to let this sit for five minutes uh, to let the dye absorb. Um, you can see a little bit of a pink halo around the outside. Um, in acidic conditions, the red number three uh, it doesn't remain soluble any longer, so it'll crash out. Um, and this solid form of the dye can still stain your yarn, um, but it's not necessarily uh, rub, like it, it could rub off um, a bit. So that's one of the reasons why with that last end, I sort of put it in this center 
not only that, but when I put it in, I also sort of shake it a little bit, shimmy it. And that's to give the yarn access to that blue color. Um, if you just plop it in without moving it around, you could end up with uh, some more white at the end, which could still be what you're looking for. Um, but I have a feeling today that I will need to end up adding some more vinegar to help this blue absorb. But um, at this stage, there's four minutes left on my timer, so we'll check on the yarn then. Let's take a look. Okay, there's still a fair amount of blue left in there. Um, with, and so therefore, I think I do want to add some more vinegar. I'm gonna go ahead and add two tablespoons of vinegar now. At this stage, the amount of color and the amount of blue that's left um, will likely absorb all over the yarn. So I've added this and I'm actually going to remove it. Yeah, that's a reasonable amount of blue that's left in there. Part of my rationale for un removing the yarn just then was also to mix up the vinegar a bit. You could start off your dip dyeing with more vinegar in the pot, but if the blues start absorbing a little faster from the get-go, then you're gonna see less of the bright blue at the end. And so this is why I, would pr I prefer to start with less acid, get a good gradient from the reds, and then help the blues bind on after, um, which gives us a lot of great color throughout the yarn. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase the heat a tiny bit, but I'm gonna give this five more minutes now that we've added the more vinegar, and then, yeah, we'll see how it's doing. All right, reducing the heat some more, and let's check on the color. Aha, that, my friends, is clear. All of our color has absorbed to the yarn. And that is exactly what we want to see. Now, at this stage, you could let the yarn stay in the pot longer to cool off, or you can remove it. See just how little water is in the pot and place it into a bowl. And we have, you know, we see on the space the magenta, uh, we've got some more intermediate purples, and then we've got our bright blue. And in all these cases, the darker of the strands definitely has some red in it in places, especially at the more magenta end, but is pretty dark throughout. But you can definitely still see this marled, uh, sort of twisted quality to the yarn. So now I'm gonna let it cool completely and then we'll wash it. When I shared a picture of this broken violet yarn on my Instagram and Facebook, I talked a little bit about how there is a reason why I come back to breaking Wilton's Violet over and over again. One of the reasons is that it's probably the technique that I've done the most um, I think of any of my dyeing techniques. Um, and look at that, that water is completely clear. Um, but in addition to the fact that I've done it a lot of times, or maybe because I've done it so many times, I have a really good feel for it. And it is almost a good way, I'm using just some clear dip soap now, it's a good way for me to learn about a different type of yarn. So for example, I know that this strikes really quickly on, say, stroll fingering, which is super wash merino nylon. And so I know I have to do the dipping cast if I want to catch those blues. Whereas with wool of the Andes, which is just 100% wool, the colors strike slower. Um, and therefore there's a little more time and usually at the end, I will need to even add some more acid for all the blues to absorb. And then with, I've tried silk blends and alpaca blends, and both of those, the, the colors absorb slower. And so in here, we have a silk yarn that is wool. Um, it's, 
you know, I, it's got wool, it's got merino, it's got highland wool, and nylon, and it's not super wash. And this actually behaves similarly to, um, similarly to just non-soft yarn that I've done. But the depth of color is beautiful. And this base was a gray base with an, a much darker gray twist. So I think that we still have these gorgeous jewel tones, but things are less bright. It's still saturated, but it's not as neon as the broken violet can feel sometimes. So anyway, um, this water is clear, and I'm now going to go hang up this yarn to dry, and then we'll come back with some conclusions, and I'll give a few more of my thoughts, but clearly I need more of this yarn base in my life. You can pick some up from Dyer Supplier, which is a bare yarn supplier associated with Knit Crate. I love the way that this took up the dye. We still have super, super vibrant tones, but they're less neon and bright and a little more of a jewel. Whatever it is, it's rich, it's saturated, and we've got this deep, it's still magenta to blue. Maybe the blue has a hint of more yellow in it, um, so it's a little more towards a teal than a bright blue, but nevertheless, it is beautiful. This yarn absorbed the color slower than, say, a superwash merino nylon blend, and I think because it's the wool content in here is not superwash. We do have this repeating gradient, but there are some sections that are a little more blue on the interior, which is fairly typical for this technique. Um, if you wanted to try to get the color a little more even on this inside, you should, as you're dipping, sort of, well, you know how I shimmied the yarn at the end to get the blue all the way through? You should just try to shimmy it as you're dip dyeing it. I am now curious as to the fiber content on those ties because those did not take up any stain. <laughs> I got this yarn as part of one of my Knit Crate subscriptions. And if you would like to learn more about that, you should check out some of my unboxing videos. I'll put a link to the video where I unboxed this specific yarn in both the video description and the iCard. And you can also find my affiliate link and a coupon code to sign up for Knit Crate in the video description. I can't remember if I already said this during this episode of Dye Put Weekly or not, but when I shared some pictures of this yarn on social media, um, I did some reflecting as to why I come back to the dip dyeing and broken violet technique over and over and over again. Um, it's something when I'm trying a new base for the first time that I love to do because it is a technique that I know so well when it comes to, say, Stroll or Wool of the Andes that you've seen me do many, many times on this channel. And because I you know, have this memory of it and I know how the colors separate, if they don't break and get these blues, then you know, sometimes it's a surface area issue if I'm doing a blank. Or if the dye absorbs a lot slower, maybe it's a yarn that might need more acid and more time for the colors to absorb. So having a, I don't know, signature technique um, or a technique, a favorite technique that you visit over and over again is a really great way to learn something about a new yarn type. The more that you dye yarn, and even if you're doing a variety of techniques and a variety of bases, but the more that you use one type of dye or one type of yarn, you'll start to get a really good feel for it. And then that gives you some more confidence to uh, step outside your comfort zone and to do something a little more experimental. So personally, right now, I'm extremely comfortable with food coloring and there's a few yarn lines that I know how they're going to respond to the dye really well. Um, but even though a lot of the techniques translate over to acid dyes, I still feel a little more clumsy because I don't have as good of a feel for the proportions and the acid and it's, not, it's just not something that I've played around with as much. So I'm saying this so that way I can follow some of my own advice. And the way to feel 
really comfortable and confident with trying new things is to keep trying new things. And when my approach with a lot of these videos is, I wonder what will happen if I do X, Y, Z, what kind of colors I can get. And this allows me to be really, really happy with the results. The times when I start to feel disappointment or when I want to achieve something extremely specific and I set out to do it and then things don't end up the way that I had expected. And then sometimes I feel bummed and disappointed. So sometimes I, I mean, obviously I wasn't disappointed this time, but sometimes I just, it's worth reflecting on that if you're feeling bummed about a color you got, what is the reason? And how can you maybe shift your outlook or shift your techniques to get something that you really want? That was a pretty big digression for this video. But anyway, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. Give the video a like, leave a comment and tell me what you thought. I release at least two new dyeing videos every week and you really don't want to miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching.